Hey everyone, what's up? It's Adam with Psychedelic Invest, and in today's episode, we're going to be doing a financial results breakdown for Field Trip Health. Uh, this is going to be current as of June 29th, 2022. So this is their Field Trip's most recent financial results. Um, we're going to be digging into everything they cover here. So there's going to be talk of the pipeline, obviously financial results and whatnot. And there's a bunch of cool things that I pulled out of this uh, this earnings report. So I'm excited to share with you guys. Um, and yeah, let's get into things. So to get things started, we're going to uh, break down FT-104. I'm going to be reading what Field Trip has to say about it first, and then I'll kind of I'll give my perspective on it. So let's get into this. Uh, before we actually do, I want to say this. I feel like in my last video, I didn't give enough um, enough attention to Field Trip's pipeline. And I won't be doing that. In this video, I'll be giving their pipeline more attention. So I feel like Field Trip generally is obviously they're looked at as a clinic play but their pipeline is is definitely getting overlooked or like their drug discovery program um and yeah they're they're spinning off into a whole nother company uh, or a sister company where they're gonna have clinics and also basically uh r d research and development for drugs um so it shows that number one field trip is really getting behind their whole drug discovery program and also i feel like investors should be taking this a little bit more seriously because after 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 um after reading and listening in to the to the obviously to the financial results and then the investor call afterwards i it it piqued my interest as far as what field trip has going on in their pipeline so let's talk about it all right so i'm just going to start reading what field trip has to say here so Field Trip, Dis Field Trip Discovery is leading the development of the next generation of custom synthetic molecules targeting serotonin 5-HT2A receptors. Lovely. FT-104 is the first drug candidate, candidate in development by the company. FT-104, given the name isoprosin guterate. I hope I pronounced that right. So I'm familiar with myprosin. So isoprosin is new to me. Um, but my person is actually a psychedelic that I have experience with, and it's a pretty cool one. Um, I wonder how similar they are. Um, okay, anyway, so is anticipated to produce a psychedelic trip of about two to three hours. So on the inv investor call, they said they were their conservative estimate was basically it's going to last about three hours. So we'll we'll use that. Um, but like I've said in past videos, and I think I need to give. Um, Field trip some credit here because this is what the next gen of psychedelics is going to be. They're going to be trying to minimize the duration of the psychedelic experience while maintaining that the therapeutic benefits. So field trip is demonstrating this in terms of the, what their drug discovery. So FT-104. So think of something that's similar to psilocybin, but it has a a psychedelic trip of about three hours so that is that's awesome that's significant because number one so if you're a clinic like field trip if you're if you're operating clinics like field trip the the main appeal um for getting the psychedelic experience uh to be shorter is number one obviously you don't want people spending hours upon hours upon hours in the clinic it's just not efficient um, and also it's going to, the shorter, the shorter the person's or the patient's psychedelic trip to the clinic is going to be, um, the cheaper it's going to be for, for insurance to pay for it and stuff like that. So it's, it just, it's, it's better for, it's better for the patient and it's going to be better in my opinion for the clinic as well. Cause they'll be able to get patients in and out, in and out, and therefore, uh, hopefully generating more revenues that way. Um, yeah, so that's that's why and like this is also why I'm so I'm always I'm always screaming about uh, DMT, DMT, DMT and why I think it's so so great. Um, just in general, shorter psychedelics are going to be what I think the masses are going to be drawn towards because it's a, just a shorter experience. It's going to be cheaper and it could be just easier on the person. And it's also just efficient for fitting into your day. So, yeah, so I love that they're, they're, they're 
psilocybin analog, I'm assuming, or no, it's not a psilocybin analog. Their, their tryptamine is going to be, um, I'm, I'm happy that it's going to be about a two to three hour duration. So that's great. Um, and uh, investors and potential investors in field trips should be stoked about this as well. So they go on to say, the structure of FT-104 is based on a classical serotonin 2A psychedelic, is based on classical serotonin 2A psychedelics like psilocybin, which have been re reported to be useful in treating a variety of mood dis disorders, including depression, anxiety, and substance abuse. So on the investor call, they mention that specifically they mention um, postpartum depression, PPD, and how Typically, uh, women who are going through postpartum depression and if they want to get any type of relief from it in terms of how long they're spending um, in a clinic and how long they can breastfeed afterwards, it takes a lot of time. I think they said the woman couldn't breastfeed for like three days after a clinic visit. So what this was just an example they're giving. So the example they gave is like now they're going to shorter they're going to shorten the duration of the clinic visit and they were hoping to make it so women could breastfeed um s sooner after after. Why do I keep saying after? I'm so sorry. <laughs> so that women could breastfeed after um they could breastfeed sooner after going to the clinic for therapy. That was a mouthful. So yeah, so I like this. I, so that's just an example for you guys, but that's kind of the angle, the business angle um, for, or one of the business angles for FT-104, and I like it because I do think that there is, uh, there's definitely a market for this. And also if you can, for specifically, for example, with PPD, if you can shorten the how long uh, the mothers are out of commission for, um, that this can turn into one of the premier uh, ways of treating PPD. Obviously, this is speculation on my part, but this is where my head is going with it. It's really interesting, and I, I love to hear this. And like I said, if for anyone uh, invested in field trip or potentially interested in investing in field trip, this is this is definitely something that should be looked at more. Uh, you should be taking their uh, research and development and drug development. Um, more seriously, uh, I think that Field Trip is really trying to come out of the gates here and be like, hey, we're not just a clinic play and you should be taking our drug development seriously. And yeah, I like it. All right. And they go on to say on April 5th, 2022, the company was granted a patent for claims related to FT-104. The patent application entitled Tryptamine Pro Drugs grants exclusive rights to field trip for the comparison composition of matter formulations methods of use and methods of manufacture for a family of hemiester compounds of hydroxytryptamines including isoprosin um, the patent protection will extend to at least mid 2040 so this is lovely um, you always want to see companies protecting their intellectual property um, and yeah, I have nothing more to really add on this. We'll get to the next part of this. So here we go. During the FT-200 group, during the quarter, Field Trip continued to progress research and development of its FT-200 molecule group. Research so far, so far is showing that candidates in the FT-200 group are demonstrating interesting pharmacological differences with classical psychedelics that might make them safer serotonin 2A agonists with a broader use potential in mental health care. That's very, very interesting. So the, in, the aim of the work is to reduce or eliminate the potential for cardiovascular-related harm by decreasing the relative activity at the serotonin 2B receptor. So, I, so once again, they were trying to improve the safety profile and they're honing in on the duration of a lot of these psychedelics. So this is what you want to see from a company that is going to be uh, – participating in their own drug discovery for their pipeline so this is great um in terms of uh in terms of just understanding what field trip is doing with their pipeline and yeah let's go on to read some more so i think i thought this was really interesting 
Um, so Dr. Nathan Bryson, Field Trip's chief scientific officer, said, Field Trip Discovery has benefited greatly from our association with the clinic's division over the past two years to better understand the responsible use and enormous potential of psychedelic drug, drug-assisted psychotherapy to produce durable relief for patients. As Reunion Neuroscience, we feel we bring a unique perspective to the development of the next generation. Regulated psychedelic medicines such as FT-104, a proprietary clinical stage prodrug designed to produce a short duration experience. And FT-200, a family of molecules with potentially reduced cardiovascular risk profiles. So, once again, this is great. I like to hear this. Um, What I want to add here is this. So, I think... Field Trip is in a pretty interesting position. So they run a lot of these clinics and they're also developing these drugs. So I feel like they they will have access to information that maybe some other companies might not have access to as early as Field Trip because they're running the clinics already. So they know they they have this they have firsthand access um to kind of the the pros and cons for a lot of the psychedelics that they're currently working with so i think that can help them in terms of in terms of developing these drugs and yeah we'll see how it goes but that's my perspective in regards to that Uh, i just thought it was something interesting to make mention of all right so let's get into more of the financial highlights for field trip so to to start things off field trip definitely mentioned during their earnings call that they were going to uh, slow down with the expansion in terms of clinics. So basically to stop some of the losses from building up quarter over quarter, they were just going to slow down uh, in terms of how aggressively they're they're expanding their clinic footprint, which is, I like this. Um, It makes sense given the increase in their net losses. All right, guys, now to wrap up the financial results. So we have total operating costs for the fiscal year 2022 were 50, 58 million, about 57.9 million. So we're going to say 58 million. And the year before was 20 million. The Their total cash was at 64.4 million. So this gives Field Trip about, let's just say, a year of runway here. It could be a little less We can if we really break things down, but we'll just ballpark it at around a year. Um, so... Yes, the, so in biotech time, this is fine. Um, but in regards to how significantly field trips uh, net losses increased this year compared to the year before, it was very, very significant. So that's the main thing I would pay attention for. Um, so there's nothing I'm really bearish about in regards to this earnings report. I'm actually, in regards to field trips pipeline, I am super bullish on that. That's, that Their pipeline seems really interesting, and I really want to hear more about um some of the drugs they're developing. Um, so love their pipeline and I love their work what they're doing with clinics in general. So in the name of the game in regards to clinics specifically and also with drug discovery is it's very, very expensive for, for these companies. Um, so especially, especially uh, opening these new clinics. Um, it's, it's a lot of money. Um, so I totally understand. Um, I, do, I understand where why there was a huge increase in their losses this year. Um, I ju- and they also, like I mentioned earlier in the video, they mentioned that they were they they they're aware of this and in and that they were going to stop uh, opening new clinics as aggressively as they have been, and they were just going to focus more on the current clinics they have and pushing out the marketing and just building the businesses there. So I like what they said, what Field Trip said in regards to that. And it just shows it's like, hey, we're aware, excuse me, we're aware of the situation with our losses. And this is what we're doing to kind of keep it in check. So we'll see how things go. I think I will say this. So in the totality of this earnings report, I am bullish on field trip. But in regards to this specifically, I'm still bullish on field trip, but we'll see what happens next earnings report. I think for a lot of these biotech companies, next earnings report will be a good an indicator in terms of are we starting to get a little bearish on some of these or are we still bullish in regards to uh, how much money they're hemorrhaging in regards to their net losses and 
how much cash some of these biotech companies still have on hand. So I'm not saying this specifically in regards to field trip. I'm saying this in regards to all the psychedelic biotech companies in the sector. I think next quarter and also the quarter after that, so the next just about six months generally, will be very, very telling. All right, all right. So to wrap things up and kind of tie things together here, uh, I wanted to bring some information that I got off the earnings report, or not the earnings report, the earnings call. So the earnings calls are super, super important. And this is a very general piece of advice for you guys. Um, it, always try to make a habit of listening to these earnings calls as you will get some golden nuggets of information here that you will not get on the earnings report themselves, what we have in front of us here. Um, yeah, so always, always, it, like it's in your best interest to either be there and to hear the earnings call or to read the transcript afterwards. So I highly, highly recommend this for you guys. Um, so now with that said, so the reason I'm going to be reading uh, the information I'm about to bring to you guys is basically because uh, in the earnings call, Field Trip clarifies what the cash runway is, what the cash runaways will be for the two separate entities that they're turning into and how long they anticipate those cash runways to last them. So these are, this is some really, really important stuff. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to get into that right now. The two uh, companies that Field Trip is spinning off into uh, is going to, they're going to be Reunion, I think it's Reunion Neuroscience and Field Trip Health and Wellness Clinics. I'm just going to add the clinics there at the end there just for the sake of understanding. So we have Field Trip Clinics and we have Reunion Neuroscience. Reunion, Reunion Neuroscience is the drug development program for Field Trip. All right. So Reunion Neuroscience is going to have 40. So Donna Wong says this. So she Reunion Neuroscience is going gonna, is gonna to have $40.2 million. They anticipate that $40.2 million to last them, to last them all the way. To last, to last them until their phase two trial. Um, but once they get to the phase two trial next year, they're going to have to do uh, another fundraise uh, to make it through the phase two. So there you go in regards to reunion neuroscience. So 40.2 million, uh, which will likely last them into next year leading up into their phase two trials. So... Very important for you guys to know. Remember that it is so you have an understanding of what's going to happen once again, once the company spin off, because I, I'm not going to be covering another uh, earnings report where I'm speaking about field trip as one company. It's going to be field trip health and wellness. And then the other company is going to be reunion. So there we go. So that was reunion. And now for field trip health and wellness. So their field trip health and wellness is going to have 20 million and that 20 million, uh, and I'll read what she says here. So the company believes based on our current fiscal forecast, our current revenues, but that funding should be sufficient to take us through to profitability. So they also had revenues, um, of a 1.7 million. Um, compared uh, 1.7 million for the quarter uh, for their clinics. So you have 1.7 million in revenues. And the, once again, so the, that's really not the, big, the biggest thing here. The biggest thing here is that they're going to have 20 million. And that 20 million, it, they're anticipating that it's going to last them until they are profitable. So that is very, very significant. And that is some, that's, that's some huge news. Um, uh, when, to say that you have enough cash to last you until you're profitable, number one, that's a huge, huge burden off the investors in terms of what they have to worry about. And actually, that just that, it's it's phenomenal. And it's good for field trip in terms of not requiring to raise more money on the clinic side. So at least that's what they're saying. We don't know how things are actually going to shake out. And we do have to take everything that is said here with a small grain of salt. Um, but... If if field trip can stick pretty close to what they're claiming here, um, this is some amazing amazing news for uh, field trip investors. So I'll, I'll put it like this: I'm extremely bullish on field trip's clinic division. Uh, I think that having enough of a cash runway to last you until profit profitability is phenomenal. 
And yeah, uh, that's it's. We'll, I hope that they can stick to this timeline and we'll see how it pans out. I think that the next earnings reports for the next, we're going to say the field trip earnings report, but it's more than likely going to be uh, these separate companies, um, is going to be very telling on if they're going to be able to stick to the timelines that they're claiming in this earnings call. But that's my bullish, bullish versus bearish video. And I'm definitely giving a uh, field trip a very bullish um, earnings report here. And yeah, we'll see how things unfold. It's going to be really telling for the whole psychedelic sector generally uh, over the next like six to 12 months. The next year is going to be very telling. Um, we're going to be able to really, really see, especially in the next two earnings reports, like we'll be able to really assess who will be more bearish on and who are really going to be the win the winners um, early on in the sector. So let's see what happens. Um, I'm really excited to go on this journey with you guys and yeah, have a phenomenal, phenomenal July 4th weekend. Drink water, stay hydrated, stay safe, everyone. Don't get your fingers blown off by any fireworks and yeah. Have a great, great weekend, everyone. This is Adam with PsychedelicInvest.com.